In this recording, we're going to work through a two-dimensional array. We're going to display each value just to show that we can work through the array, the array properly. Um, the context of this example that we're going to extend out several different videos or several different lessons is this, that we have an array that contains pressure readings. Whatever process it is that we're monitoring, apparently it's important that we keep track of the pressures. We have four sensors taking readings. The first row is sensor 1, the second row is sensor 2, the third row is sensor 3, and the fourth row is sensor 4. Now each reading is taken every six hours, which means we have, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 columns in each row. This represents one day's worth of pressure data. So okay, here we go. So to work through this array, I simply want to display each element. And the functionality, or at least the mechanics of it, look like this. I want to say for i equals 1 to the number of rows, since we usually talk about arrays, rows and columns, let's go row by row first, and I want to say 1 to 4. And then I, once I'm in a row, so I want to start in row 1, and then I want to move to row 2, and then to row 3, and then to row 4. But when I'm in row 1, I want to start in column 1, and then I want to move to column 2, column 3, column 4, column 5, and column 6. So now we're going to say 4j equals 1 to 6. So now, let's just end and end. We're going to put the meat of what's going on right in here, which is going to be nothing more than a display statement, but we're going to figure out what we're going to display in a moment. Um, let's just look at how this works really quickly. We're going to step into i, we'll say that i equals 1, and then we come down. Then j will equal 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6. Then we're done with j, so we're going to leave that, but we haven't left our outer loop, so we're going to come back up. Then i will equal 2. Then j will equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then we'll come back up. i will equal 3. j will equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then i will equal 4. Now the way this will, will look in the array is the following. We're going to start in row 1, so we're going to attack these six elements first. We're going to start in column 1. So as the loop iterates, i will equal 1, j equals 1, i equals 1, j equals 2, i equals 1, j equals 3, j equals 4, j equals 5, j equals 6. Then i equals 2 and j equals 1 i equals 2 and j equals 2, i equals 2, so i hasn't changed, j equals 3, j equals 4, j equals 5, and j equals 6. Then i will change to 3, j will start at 1, go to 2, to 3, to 4, 5, and 6. Then i will go to 4, 1, j equals 1, and then j equals 2, and 3, 4, 5, and 6, and then we're done. Now in here we want to display some value in the pressures array, so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it. But we need to reference the value we would like to display based on its index. And its index is nothing more than the row and column. Well, i takes us through the rows, 1 through 4. j takes us through the columns. So at the end of this, I need the index at, or the element at index i, comma j. And if I run this, we get the following. If I look down in my command window, I should have 489, 370, 550, 489, 375, 50, 46, 172, 46, 172, 32, good, and then 146, 284, 558. Now this is going to get a little tedious because, well, it's going to be hard to keep track of all of this, so we're actually going to build out our display statement. Now we could do it in one of two ways. We can build a, a character array and then display that character array, or we could just display this. We're actually going to do both. So I'm going to type temp underscore str, which just stands for temp string. Sorry, missed my keys. Uh, and now we're going to build this. We're going to say the element at location, and then I need whatever the row is. Okay. And column. And then I'll need whatever the column is, is equal to, and then I'll need whatever the element is. Okay, now here I need the row number, here I need the column number, here I need the element. So here where I need the row number, I'm going to type i, here where I need the, that was the row number, here I need the column number, I'm going to type j, and here I'm going to type pressures at i, comma j. So let's copy that and we'll paste it. Okay, let's put some space in between because eventually what we want is we want to display temp underscore str. That's our first method. We're going to comment the second method out for right now. We're just going to focus on the first because what we want to see is the element at 
at row one, we'll say comma, column one, comma, is equal to whatever that value is. And then the element at row one, column two, row one, column three. So let's see how this works. Let's run it. Okay. So the structure of my string looks great. The element of row box, comma, uh, column something, I don't even know, O oh, box, uh, is equal to, and then we get a whole slot of, I don't even know what all of that is. Um, so here's the problem. This is a number. This is a string. This is a character array. So everything in here must be string or character, so I need to turn these numbers into strings. And to do that, we just use our num to string function, and then num to string around j. Because again, the entire array has to be the same type of data, so you can't intermix strings and numbers. Now when I run this, this is going to change. Let me go through. The element at row 1, column 1 is equal to 489. That's correct. The element at row 1, column 2 is 370. That's correct. The element at row 1, column 3 is 550. That's correct. Now again, we're building this example so that we can display a warning eventually, but we're not going to get to the end of that in this example. So the next thing that we need to do is we just need to come up with our second way of displaying this information um, because we could do this or I could take this entire array, copy it. I'm saving this entire array into temp string, and then I'm displaying temp string. The display function will display only one array at one time, so I'm going to get rid of this information, and then I'm going to paste in that array that I built. The array starts with a bracket, ends with a bracket. I'm passing, see, open uh, parentheses, close parentheses, so inside of those parentheses is the information I'm passing. I'm passing one array. So when I run this, I'm going to get two of each statement so that we can see each one of these. The element at row one, column one is 489. The element at row one, column one is equal to 489. So those are the same. So here we're just gonna go ahead and we'll comment that second method out um, and we'll run it again. And now we have worked through the entire array, row at a time, column in each row, and then we have gotten to what it is that we need. Now, here's the thing, and this is the last thing we're going to do, okay? I wanna display, again, a blank, blank line and I want to take this entire thing minus this but we'll just copy it and paste it right down here because in our first example we went row by row and then column by column through each row here I want to go column by column and then row by row through each column so here we're going to change this I to a J this 4 to a 6 this J to an I and this 6 to a 4 now there's nothing else that I have to change. The only thing that's changing now is structurally, instead of seeing all of the row one information, then all the row two information, then all row three, then all row four, you're gonna see all of column one, then column two, then column three, column four, column five, and column six. So let's run this. And now in our first example, okay, row one, row two, row three, row four, exactly like what we just had. But now in our second block right here, we have all of the column one information, all the column two, then all the column three, four, five, and six. So these are two different ways to step through every value in that array. We can go row by row and column by column in each row, or we can go column by column and then row by row in each column. Go down column one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six. All right, so next time we're gonna be working on doing a few more things. We'll choose one strategy of these two. I just wanted to show you both both ways of displaying and both ways of moving through the array. So, till next time.